Hey guys. So today in this video, what I wanted to do is an updated information guide for the interrupt affinity policy configuration tool. And the reason why I wanted to make this specific guide is because there were a lot of people um, pointing out on my video previously that I made about this specific tool that basically you can't apply interrupts to specific, very specific hardware devices within a USB tree. And what they mean by that is in my previous videos, what I mentioned is that I recommended people use, for example, finding which mouse was the actual mouse that they were using and go into here, go into details and then find the physical device object name and then find that device object name amongst the um, C of all of the different devices inside of the configuration tool and then apply a mask for or an affinity towards that device. But the person basically pointed out and they had a, um, I believe they said it was a development kit that basically showed that the activity on that core is not actually accurate to, you know, the information showing on your screen or what you're trying to do with the tool essentially. And so I found this to be true. And what I ended up discovering is that the actual way to do it is that you have to use the this specific USB extensible host controller device, because essentially what this does is it acts as if a like a master hub that controls all of the other USB devices that are inside of that tree. And so if you want to apply the interrupt affinity policy for a specific USB device, in my previous videos, I wanted to emphasize that you don't want to do it for large system devices because especially with like USB root hubs, you can have many, many USB devices on one hub at any one time. And that can cause a lot of issues where you're not really getting the benefits of running it on one specific isolated core. But the benefit is that this new methodology is not much difficult, not much different than the um, video that I published previously. So you do want to still spread all of your interrupts across as many cores as you have available that will give you the lowest values that you want inside of LatencyMon. But the new trick is that essentially, obviously, we're going to go and use this instead of anywhere specifically inside of here. And so if you just go and right click on here and then you go down obviously to the device object name, the physical device object name, and you're going to want to look for that number, which is 30. Well, if I go down into here and I click on, for example, the um, letter U and I basically just keep clicking and sorting through, I'll end up finding the number 30 and that's going to be the one that I want to apply affinity for. And so I did core six. And for my ethernet controller or my ethernet, I essentially binded it to affinity or core number five. Now, in my previous video, I didn't mention this, but how do we validate and prove that there are interrupts being applied to this specific device on that core? Well, the easiest way is essentially we can run an internet speed test. And here's how you do that essentially. You can just use the regular one that Google provides that you know most people use anyway. And then what you're going to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to go in the CPU tab of your LatencyMon application and then you're going to want to hit the start button. And what you're looking for is activity on the core that you assign the specific device to. So for core number six, I have my GPU and my USB mouse applied to it, but I'm not moving my mouse right now. So the amount of interrupts I'm having is pretty low. And the highest execution is also from the DirectX graphics kernel, which is your GPU. Now, once I do this, so as I start that, I'm going to restart it, and then I'm going to start a stress test. Now, if we watch this, you'll notice that on core five, which was the core that I specifically applied that interrupt for the USB gigabit ethernet controller, you'll notice that core five now has a ton of ISR counts and DPC counts. And it's actually running on the Windows driver framework, which controls the USB devices in your system. So that's how we validate for the internet. Now, how do we validate for something like our mouse well, the easiest way is if I go and restart this stress test and then I don't move my mouse, we're going to want to measure the amount of interrupts that are happening at any one second and then measure that against what happens when we move our mouse later. And so you'll notice that we have no ISR counts, but we have a few DPC counts in a few thousand per second. Well, as soon as I start moving my mouse, you'll notice that our ISR count jumps dramatically and our DPC count also jumps as well. And we start getting a little bit of activity going forward with that. And then as soon as I stop, 
we no longer have any ISR counts and no longer have any more DPC counts. So that is the best way to validate a specific interrupt affinity being applied to a specific core is that you want to make sure that you are checking with latency mon that the core is actually activating with the correct driver and that you're actually getting a lower latency value inside of the main tab. So as you can see, yeah, ran that for 30 seconds and we have a, a, a cripplingly low levels. And so this is really good latency values. And so that's essentially the new guide for this. Now, how was I able to separate this AMD USB extensible host controller from all of the other USB devices connected to it. So essentially I only have my Razer mouse connected to it. How did I figure that out? Well, on each one of your motherboards, there are essentially going to be more USB ports than there are extensible host controllers, but each extensible host controller has about two, maybe three ish USB ports that are connected to it. And so on my motherboard, what I ended up discovering is that if I pull it up here, on one of my specific USB ports, the actual um, USB ports are different from each other in a obvious way. So for example, right here, you'll notice that the flash BIOS um, USB port, I plugged my mouse into that port and I discovered that this extensible host controller only applies for that specific USB port. And so even if I plug something in here, 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 anywhere in this entire motherboard back panel, it doesn't matter. It will still run with only this USB device connected to it. And so that's how I was able to discover that there's another extensible host controller that I can use. And then for my ethernet controller, I discovered that if I plug in one of my um, USB devices inside of here, that that is another extensible host controller port. And that if I keep everything off of this port and this port, I don't have any other USB devices connecting to this specific host controller. So that's how you separate out the devices that you care about, because we only really care about, in particular, two or three devices, which is your mouse, your GPU, and your Ethernet, because those three are the ones that hit the most, they have the most latency sensitivity, and they're the ones that are the most likely to cause issues down the road. Now, for other non-specific devices that are not related to your USBs, so like your graphics cards, all of the other devices like your SSDs, if you want to apply an affinity for those, you don't have to use the PCI Express root port or the complex. You just have to select the actual device. I did try and do the Express root port, but I didn't get any reporting back on latency mon. So you will have to experiment a little bit for each device because there's no one specific rule for each one. It's just that some of them will only require you to just use the actual device itself, or they'll want you to use one branch higher, or in the case of USBs, they want you to use the entire tree. And so that's what you wanna do is just spread out all of the different stuff of your affinities across multiple different cores, validate it and test it inside of here. And then that should help you guys figure out what you're actually going to be getting in terms of real world values. And so that's the main thing. Now, what can you do if let's say you have a motherboard that has very few extensible host controllers? Let's say that you have a motherboard that's fairly, um, we'll say, low end or it's a niche kind of board so it's not necessarily meant to have a lot of usb ports well you can actually buy specific devices that are incredibly cheap so 10 15 bucks is all you'll need and sometimes even cheaper just depending on the actual you know cost of it in your area and all you want to do is just look up these usb adapters that you can plug into your motherboard pcie slots and the reason why this essentially works is because it is always disconnected from the other USB ports in your system because it has its own PCIe slot. And so that's one way to get around this issue because obviously we have a downstream switch port here, we have a root port here, we have another root port here. So we're connecting through the PCI Express um, interface. So buying one of these and then using that should work. Now, how do we validate that this actually should work, which I do plan on buying one of these and I'll leave a comment in the description and give you guys some feedback on if it actually does work. Well, if we go down here and then we type in extensible, 
what we'll notice is that it says compliant with extensible host controller interface or the XHCI specification revision and compliant with this one as well. So that should tell you guys also that these devices are compatible with the actual ability to give you those extensible host controllers, which is what you want to have. And so that's only if you have one or two and you can't sacrifice any USB ports. So that's just a neat little workaround, very inexpensive and relatively easy to fix. And so, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is the reason why I like this channel and why I like making this kind of content is because some of you guys have access to stuff that would take me much longer to set up and would take me a lot longer to find out. And I like to obviously bring up this new kind of stuff whenever I get the chance. And so thank you guys for doing that kind of stuff. I do plan on publishing the other two videos that I requested in the um, poll that I took just barely. And so that will be what will be going forward. I figured that this would be a good guide to publish as an updated version for the information. So that way you guys can be up to date and have all the stuff that you need. And also I did test this on a bunch of other PCs in my friends' systems. And so I essentially had them show me their device trees and their device managers. And what I found is that even with motherboards that had CPUs as old as the 2600, the person still had three extensible host controllers. So even uh, 2600 will have at least three, which is should be enough for most people. And the 5800X had three as well. And I think there was a fourth one as well. And then the 11900K had at least two or three. And then the 13600K had at least two or three as well. So it's, it's pretty unlikely that you're only going to have one or two extensible host controllers. You should have more than that. And if you don't, you have the option of obviously buying the inexpensive adapter that you can use and that should get you there. And obviously I'll provide feedback for that in the comments section if it actually does work. And so, yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this content. Please like, subscribe, all that sort of fun stuff. Leave any comments, suggestions, or recommendations that you guys you know want to see in the future. And share this video with anybody you find that would like to get lower latency and lower input lag on their system. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. My name's Savaterix, and I'm out.